Hi everybody, Yara here. I'm back in the wall garden. I hope you are well. Now this video is going to be a wee bit different because I want to talk about a very incisive experience I had and not of the nice kind. I tried to cut talking about my experience, you know, to make it as short as possible because I want to go then on to what I feel is actually happening or has happened to many what you term light workers or beacons. The, you know, in the end, we are all beacons, but specifically the ones that have chosen to come in to be service to other, to work with and in the collective as healers, you know, sort of all of this umbrella terms that go what do you term light worker um so i was perfectly fine i mean i'm very happy for the moment again sorry in the lockdown and not having that much pressure in my regular job and on wednesday i felt like as if a switch was flicked it really happened almost from one moment to the next. Though I have to say, I had earlier in the year similar onsets but caught the groove. So I'm going to go into that. And I just want to say, yes, no, I have not quit. I was about to. But on Wednesday, when this switch got flicked, from literally one moment to the next, I felt plunged into the deepest, darkest despair. It was like this all-encompassing dark night of the soul. I lost all faith in humanity. All, you know, all I've been working with. I didn't see any sense any longer why I should put out... Um, you know, regular videos with the channelings, um, etc., etc. Um, nothing mattered any longer. Nothing made sense. And that was the most terrifyingly awful state to be in. The worst was I felt instantaneously that I lost this connection. Though we never lose the connection, it's the feeling of losing it and in hindsight now it made me understand how many are feeling like that how what i felt over a period of 20 uh, 24 hour plus 24 hours plus but it was the most terrible state to be in because nothing mattered i was about to close the channel I was about to retreat and withdraw from any kind of service to other work. Um, I was going to pull the plug on top of that. And that gave me a huge, like, whoa, jolt. I started feeling suicidal. And that made me feel even worse. And I felt almost standing beside myself and watching myself no dive. It, it was a weird state. And I was diving deep. I was diving into, well, here I would say I was plummeting through various different frequency bands. That's what it felt like. Um, I felt like being free fall. And the worst was not feeling the connection. And this absolute sadness in my heart, it was almost killing me. It, it was and I, I shouldn't start crying now. <laughs> um, terrible. Um, and the only thing I could do was tell other people I'm off. I just didn't want to let people think that I have stepped off the planet, so to speak. But feeling suicidal for me is a no-no. I mean, even after the most horrendous domestic abuse... I still got up and, you know, went again. I didn't quit then, so why would I quit now? Um, I could not understand it. And I felt 
that I was com somebody completely different. It was so disconcerting. And I only wanted to flee myself, really. It, it was, but at the same time, this, this pain, I wouldn't even want to call it darkness because I felt darkness, was pulling me even further down. And yeah, it was absolutely terrifying um, in any form or shape, but it opened my eyes. So no, I haven't quit, I'm back. And I wanna tell all of these beautiful people, again, my deepest, deepest heartfelt gratitude for being there for me for showering me with waves of love and that is what really reached me um and this is so important actually that yes you can talk to somebody but i think it reached me really on a deep deep heart level and you know, once these waves of love were there, flooding my structure and l me letting them in, because in the end I reached out because I did not understand what was happening, what was slapping my, you know, energetic face. Um, now I can look back, but it was a deep, deep eye opener. S um, and I feel that many, many, many have experienced that and have quit. Or I want to reach out to the ones that are about to quit because there's so much happening for the moment. And I want to talk about balancing oneself um, uh, when you feel depleted or not letting yourself to be depleted and to give yourself the space to nourish and recuperate um, also, particularly when you're somebody that is putting out and out and out because they feel they're not important. So it's a very valuable les lesson for me as well to feel my importance and not gloss over me. I take a quick break. I need to move um, the, um, the, 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 the <laughs> yeah, the laptop, the camera. Okay, I hope I haven't lost my thread now. Um, and it's still a bit in the light, my camera, um, in the sun. It doesn't like it, so it does weird things, starts flickering and stuff. So having experienced this and, you know, um, with waves of love pulling, you know, myself out and feeling this um, really help me through this but I still needed to understand and because my connection was a bit hampered or I felt it was still a bit hampered I didn't get any answers yet but a very very dear friend and friends of mine particularly one helped me also to see the bigger connection and I think when we are plunging you know uh, or nose diving sort of into the deepest darkest recesses of despair um, it has it is multi-layered um, has many different aspects and one of these I did really um, was really brought much more into my awareness though so my higher and greater aspect are banging on about this all the time and they are saying, sorry for the pause, um, I'm trying not to make this too long, but I think it's very important that we are far more intricately and deeply and emotionally linked to our other soul fractals, not only the Mary, Peter, Bob, you know, the different, let's say, mantles we assume to have different experiences. But talking about as well our parallel lives, the ones, you know, that have taken particular decisions and went off into another tangent because they all exist and concurrently next to us. But also the ones that are repeating 
the same lifetime because they were not happy with the you know the outcome of the index life so to speak and this is the one thing there I make a side note where I really really started much more to understand what is meant by multi-dimensionality because our creational um, ways or selves the possibilities are so endless. We have only scratched the surface, really, in understanding. And I have understood something also through particularly one Akashic reading, um, where this client repeated the same lifetime eight times over. She's now in the eighth, and she, she caught the curb, so to speak. Um, and it has cropped up, up in various channelings and I just didn't get it. That we can, you know, use a different platform, but the same, let's say the same codes and the same quality, you know, let's say I, I had this index life I was not happy because maybe I did top myself because I couldn't catch the curb or whatever and then I was not happy with the outcome beyond the veil so um, I thought okay let's do this again but apart from a few key players in there the rest is a projection but because we have the veil of forgetting I know I'm breezing through this I'm going to make another video on that because this is really important the rest is a projection, but the projection feels as real as the index life because everything we create feels real, despite the fact that I would have recreated another life as Yara with trying to take different uh, decisions, making different choices. Um, but as we have the way of, of forgetting, we are blundering again. Anyhow, this is a side note. But what now as well, my high and greater aspect have confirmed this again. We are far more intimately and emotionally linked to our other soul fractals and what happens to them. So let's assume the trauma of maybe another, because all is running concurrently, fractal of mine has plunged and um, quit the earthly plane through suicide. This will reverberate this huge ripple effect affecting all of my other soul fractals, as well as, for example, healing, deep, deep healing has this huge ripple effect, not only with all your other soul fractals, but in the whole collective. And I feel really that was one aspect of it and I'm going to go into that in subsequent subsequent videos I want to just watch the clock the other thing I think why light workers quit and I'm one of the worst perpetrators in that and this has given me a huge lesson I let myself deplete to be depleted um, because this was also a lesson in self-love because I always felt that I'm not important, that the other is more important. And to give and to give and to give and not nourish oneself and keep ourselves in balance. And that's what happened as well. This was another layer on top of what I just mentioned. Um, equally, there is so much going on on for the moment that you know when you sleep when you do something where you're a bit absent-minded like when i do long stretches you know like three hours of mowing straight um i sometimes feel i lift off and do something else or when i'm very tired and on the phone to somebody i can suddenly step away which is very annoying i try not to do that <laughs> again but even when we're not conscious of it, so to speak, we are still doing massive amounts for the collective healing, 
sending out the codes, whatever. But the thing is that when you quit and when I felt myself shutting down the light or the connection, I really felt, you know, the light switch went off. It was dark. It is then so difficult to find the light switch again. And I feel there are so many out there and some that experienced that didn't maybe have the support network. And I'm incredibly grateful that, you know, I'm working with such beautiful people. Even if we just say hello on Facebook or share some information, the link is there. You know, it comes from the heart. And sometimes the weakest links need to be looked after. And I was that weak link. But that's just a figure of speech. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, I fell off. I fell away. <laughs> um, and many are doing that. And I really want to share this for that. So, um Looking after your energetic self is very important now to all of the stuff that is happening and also all the changes. And the collective is so present as well. What they are feeling, like the whole of humanity, the frustration, the elation, mostly for the moment, frustration because of the lockdowns, etc., etc. I personally love it, but... You know, for some people, it might be really difficult being in a flat and only allowed out, you know, for uh, brief grocery shopping. And I have the leisure of countryside. Of course, it makes it easier. Um, but also because I feel it will have a huge impact on how we are evolving right now. So there are various different aspects to that and also not laying yourself open to be energetically sucked dry. This is something I have to learn to, you know, learn to say no and say, I'll do it at a later date because now I need to look after number one. Because if that, if, if I get more and more depleted, and I'm sure many are doing that, then I can't really help. And I think it's a combination of us also feeling far more keenly our concurrent selves, not only the ones that we're repeating, but all the others. We feel them because we are them and they feel you. So I might have sent out a massive dark night of the soul ripple effect because I felt so ripped and you know um, torn away from this beautiful connection I feel and I'm back there again so I'm, I'm not going to quit um, I'm here and if anybody wants to reach out who is experiencing this please by all means write to me also um one last thing um if anybody has a few cool um questions for my next video because i think this is so beautiful because i can answer hopefully well you know through also my filter with my higher aspect some of the questions that people feel compelled to ask and i i'm not shying away from any kind of you know, um, conspiracy type things, the higher aspect will answer as they do. Um, and yeah, so if you think of any cool stuff, send me the questions. So I hope this was um, helpful. And before I go, sorry, I want to briefly make you aware exactly about this in a certain way by a friend of mine, Carol, and her name is Weishoa. And she actually speaks about this as well. When in a cluster group, um, a beacon, because we have all our little cross, yeah, crustal, yeah, it's okay, cluster groups, where we feel a deep connection to, and we feed each other. And through feeding us, we feed everything else. 
like with these bonds of love coming from the heart space. So she talks about also when somebody is faltering or foundering within the cluster group, that the cluster group actually takes care of them. And this is very important. We are not alone. We are never alone. But it can feel like that. Trust me. Yep, it felt grim. But I'm back. So I'm not quitting the channel. And I want to say, um, again, I'm so sorry for having worried so many. I'm back and I want to thank everybody again. Love you all. Really do. I do. It's um, Otherwise, I'm going to start crying again and I haven't got waterproof mascara. You don't want me to look like a panda. Um, okay, listen, i got to go and I hope this helped. Love you.